Hey peeps, we are back. We are talking The Real Housewives of Potomac, season six, episode nine. Before we get into the video, please do me the honors of subscribing to my channel, hitting the notification bell so you can always be notified when I post new content, hitting the thumbs up because that does wonders for my channel, and share. Thanks. So the episode starts off, we see Mia getting ready to have lunch with her mom. She's a little nervous. Um, she asked her husband, Gordon, who I really like. He seems to be really supportive of her. And I really appreciate that about him. Um, she's nervous about meeting up with her mom because she says that her mom is finally clean and sober. And she wants to have a heartfelt conversation with her, but she doesn't want to tip her over the edge. She doesn't want to be responsible for her mom falling off the wagon. And I totally get it. This is a conversation that does have to be handled delicately, especially when you're worried about someone maybe possibly being triggered. Then we move over to Wendy's house and she's having a conversation with her husband, Eddie, and she's explaining to him everything that happened on the trip and how she was really hurt by these allegations that were brought up. And she says it really upset her. She feels that they used Ashley to bring up this conversation with her. And she really didn't think that Ashley was the person to have this conversation with. And you know, to be honest, if I did have to sit down with any of those women to have this conversation with, Ashley or Karen would be my option. You know, Ashley has been through it. As Giselle likes to say, Ashley and her husband have broken the internet plenty of times. And I think Ashley knows the feelings that are involved. So Ashley or Karen would be the ones that I would choose if I had to pick any of these ladies from this group to talk about possible infidelities in a marriage. It was kind of sad to see Eddie was a bit hurt about it as well. He brings up how they shared with the entire group that he ended up having to walk away from his entire family to be with her. You know, if he would give up everything, why would he cheat? Um, I think that's a good statement, but I don't really know. I mean, there's a lot of men who have given up things. There's a lot of women who have given up things, uh, families, trust funds. You know, the people have walked through hell together and somehow they still cheat. So I don't know if that's the best reason for not cheating, but it is really good. It's up there in the top 10. I would say this, you have to be hurt to project hurt onto someone else. She can't genuinely be happy for you if she can still do something like that. You know, Wendy does make this statement. The ladies don't understand her reaction because they've never experienced that kind of love. You know, the kind of love that her and her husband have and they never will. You know, I don't know what kind of love these ladies have experienced. And I can't say that they never will experience the love that Eddie has with Wendy. But I can say that I agree with Eddie. Hurt people hurt people. And sometimes when you're really jealous because you don't have a husband or because maybe your relationship isn't progressing the way you want it to or things just aren't working and communication is broken down, that you could possibly go after somebody else because misery loves company. Um, but I can't say that these ladies will never experience. They, they very well may. And actually, I hope that they do experience um, true love, happy love at some point in their lives. Because if so, maybe they'll stop being so bitter to others. Now, Robin goes over to Giselle's house because they're working on this podcast, Reasonably Shady. And I'm telling you, podcasts are big. You know, everyone has a podcast these days. I mean, as a matter of fact, one day, Lord, I might have a podcast. You know, everybody has a podcast. But, um, no. You know, I listen to podcasts on a regular basis. Most of them, they're true crime. Well, who am I lying to? All of them are true crime. Um, I would never listen to Giselle and Robin. Uh, no. But anyway, Robin could hardly get into Giselle's house. Her door was janky. I said, Lord, have mercy, ma'am. Get a new door. Put a little oil on it. Slide some oil to me. Slide some oil to the door. You know what I mean? Anyway, this podcast, they start talking about relationships and infidelity. I said, wait a minute now. I, I wouldn't take advice from Robin or Giselle to save my life. No, thank you. No, thank you. As far as infidelity is concerned, I decided that if it's a one night thing, okay, cool. We can get through that. We can get through that. Yeah. But if this is a lifestyle, if this is how you want to live your life, right. I'm just not signing up for it. 
I'm not shocked that Giselle and Jamal are not together. I never saw them together. Listen, uh, both of them are full of crap. Both of them are full of crap. She knew exactly what was going on with Jamal. She always has. She knew that Jamal was a cheater before she even married him, allegedly. We all heard the stories, okay? She mentioned it several times in her first season that he was a cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. That's what she said. I didn't say that. I wouldn't say anything that lame. I would have said some other kind of eater. But anyway, moving on. Where's my mind? Um, Giselle, we all know that was fake and phony. You and him were not together. This was just for you to have a storyline. You keep on every season. That's all you got. Jamal, Jamal, Jamal. That's it. And then everybody else's business. And then Robin making this comment that she knows what she's worth now. And she wouldn't put up with anything other than what she deserves. Lies. Ma'am, quit lying. Quit lying. Don't lie to us. But most of all, stop lying to yourself. You have put up with a lot and you still are. Then we see Candace sit down with Chris and they're talking about her busy schedule. Goodness gracious. She's doing this. She's doing that. You know, and she brings up to Chris that Giselle made the comment that she believes that Chris is riding her coattails. And I said, oh, wow. Because, you know, Chris really likes Giselle. He just comes back and says that she has always been extremely supportive to him and his career. You know, she hostessed at his restaurant when they were short staffed. And now this is his opportunity to, you know, give back some of that support to her to help her when she needs some help. And Candace pretty much says that Giselle needs to mind her business. That's the problem. She doesn't have any business. I'd like Giselle to just get some business, ma'am. Please find you something to do. Goodness. Then she goes on to tell him about Ashley and how, you know, she thinks that Ashley just came down there, lit a match and left. And I agree. Ashley did spark the flame. Then she left. You could have been trying to come from a good place. I went to the kitchen. Ashley and her forehead were in there getting her breast milk. And I saw her gleefully as she's in the fridge getting her little titty milk. That is not how that was supposed to go. Just not. <laughs> Time for her. Okay. Like, you're gross. That's a little harsh. Oh, Candace is extremely rude when it comes to Ashley. And, you know, her and Ashley can go toe to toe. We have seen previous seasons that Ashley can give as good as she gets. And Candace, too. Both of those ladies go back and forth, back and forth. But at this point, it's more Candace going after Ashley than Ashley going after Candace. So, you know, Chris said, too, he said, that's mean. That's rude. I agree. Michael and Ashley take the baby to see a massage specialist. The baby is having some trouble latching on. And before the woman can even get her hands on baby Dylan, Michael is giving her a full-fledged interview. This man is practically interrogating this woman. He goes through her, her credentials, everything. I said, my gosh, sir, why didn't you get this information before the appointment? You could have gotten all this information before the appointment with a simple phone call. Anyway, after he is satisfied that she's certified to take care of the baby, which I totally appreciate, she gives the baby a little massage and he seems so comfortable. I mean, he was so relaxed and comfortable. He was asleep before they got into the car and I thought that was so cute. And then I reminded me, I need a massage. Anyway, I hope that things are better for baby Dylan. I hope he's able to latch on now. Um, Michael and Ashley have a conversation in the car. Yes. And you're quickly getting back into shape, which is great for me. And um, you certainly don't look like you're overweight in any way, shape, and form. So I find you very attractive, and I'm, I'm looking forward to that. That ticked me off. That truly ticked me off, because what if she didn't snap back quickly? What if she wasn't losing her weight? What if she was still retaining all of this water and what if her hormones were still all over the place then what i really don't like that you don't know what women go through while they're pregnant you don't know what happens right after that their bodies are so different after having a baby i mean while you're pregnant your hormones are raging you're going through so many changes you're retaining water and all of the same things are happening after you have your baby i think michael should really just shut it not every woman bounces back really quickly I think that women should take as much time as they need to get back to feeling comfortable. You have to go through it. It's a process and men shouldn't rush it.
we see Robin talking to her son and she's talking to him about school and then she reaches out to this life coach. And as we've been saying to her peeps, or I have through, the, through my videos, you need a therapist, okay? So the life coach even mentions that. Maybe you should see a therapist versus a life coach. This whole time this woman is explaining to Robin the importance of seeing a therapist and what therapists do versus what a life coach does, Robin says that she doesn't think she needs a therapist. Lies, ma'am, you are lying to yourself. You are depressed, okay? You need to see a licensed therapist, you and Sonia Morgan, okay? Stop with the, the, the bong lady and the crystal woman. Stop with all the foolishness. You don't need life coach. You need a therapist. You know, if anything, you could really use a therapist to teach you how to detach your head from Giselle's ass. Sorry, peeps. I'm just over Robin and Giselle. Mia's lunch with her mom starts off really well. I was just a little concerned about them ordering cocktails after she just told us her mom just got out of rehab. But anyway, things started off great until she mentions her father. We find out that it was her dad that introduced her mom to drugs. And then she talks to her a little bit about when she got burned. Remember a few episodes back, she told us about getting burned as a child and then being taken away. The night that you got burnt, do you remember that? I don't remember it, but I have the scars to show it all over my body, yes. When you decide to cook oatmeal and you poured it off the stove and it went down, you know, burnt you second, third degree burns. I was at work 15 minutes when they called said I had to go back home as fast as I could get there. And I'm like, her father's there. And when I got back to the house, he was in the basement with another woman. That explains a lot. That explains a lot. And I would like to say that I appreciate her mom for being so brave to share that with all of us, with across the nation. And... You know, she also mentions that she puts him out, but then three days later, due to the drugs and everything, she just wanted him back. She mentioned that she tried to take her own life at one point because she couldn't live with him, but she also couldn't live without him. And you could just tell that she was truly devastated. These thoughts and memories of the past seem to be overwhelming and not just for her but for Mia as well and I think that it is a good idea for Mia and her mom both to possibly get into therapy together and separately um, I think that her mom is really a strong woman and she's on the mend she just has to take it one day at a time and try her best to maintain her sobriety right now I think she's doing really well She's doing really well, and I think that she needs to start first with forgiving herself. And I'm wishing nothing but the very best for her and her mom. I really admire that she was able to get out and tell her story, or at least parts of it. So Karen is out shopping for a second wedding dress, and honey, I don't understand. Why do you need the two? And she says that she needs a dress that she can dance in. Maybe a nice white pantsuit. I don't know. Anyway, she does let us know that the original dress, the first dress, the one she's going to get remarried in was $10,000. Oh my goodness. Speaking of wedding dresses, I looked up some of those wedding dresses by Dorit from the Housewives of Beverly Hills. Her dresses are anywhere from $7,000 to then to $10,000. I said, point me to the knockoffs. Somebody direct me to David's Bridal. Anyway, I want the David's Bridal sale. You know, the $99 one. I can't imagine, I can't imagine one, paying $10,000 for a dress. Two, I can't imagine having an extra $10,000 for the dress. I'd like to spend $10,000 for the whole wedding. I'm just saying, I'm cheap and I'm not rich. Anyway, moving on. What I thought was hilarious is they showed a little flashback and Karen asked Ray if they could get a little practice walking down all those steps. Ray's face and her face. And then if you saw my face, <laughs> no ma'am, we saw the way Ray came up and down them steps last season. I think you're asking too much. That'd be super nice, especially in this area. Wait, is it here? Yeah. 
This Stop. is the venue. Oh, okay. This is it. This is the venue um, with 40 people. The interior of the space is perfect. Uh-uh, Mia, not interior. <laughs> we might have to get some type of runners for outside. You know what, Mia is somewhat shady, but I agree. You know, the inside is gorgeous. The outside, not so much. But anyway, it doesn't matter. The wedding is taking place on the inside of the building, not the outside. Mia lets Wendy and Karen know that they have not been invited to Robin's birthday party. And my thing is this, I hope Giselle doesn't think she's hurting Wendy or Karen. They don't care. They really don't. I don't think that they care one way or the other. I think it's also just childish. It really is. You know that you're all a part of this girl group. It doesn't make sense. But who cares? I wouldn't even want to go. Especially after all the blow-ups from the weekend before. Who wants to be bothered? Giselle says that she was only going to invite people who actually wanted to celebrate Robin. People who actually wished Robin a happy birthday. So I'm assuming that Wendy and Karen did not, did not wish Robin a happy birthday. Now, at one point, Karen brought up that whole wishing Ray death again. You know what, Karen, stop it, okay? You have got to let that go. That dog just doesn't hunt, okay, ma'am? I am sorry, you are holding on to that for some reason. The woman did not wish death upon Ray. And this was four years ago. Let it go, okay? Karen is my favorite out of all the women of Potomac. But girl, you gotta let this one go. So Chris and Candace go out for lunch and they're discussing her video shoot. And Chris lets her know that he's not going to be able to be there for one of the days while they're filming her music video because he has to work. And it didn't go over well. You always go play golf when I need you to be present to do the that I need to do for this video. I want to spend five minutes doing something that I want to do so I that I then can spend the rest time. of my time doing your I will cuss you the out. Check your attitude. Find somebody else to do that for free. Why would you say that? I'm trying not to cuss you out right now. We're being different than you. Now, first of all, you need to stop it. The way she talks to this man is disgraceful. He is your husband. He is not your child. She talks to him as if he is a toddler and she is in charge of him. This is ridiculous. You need a professional manager. He is a chef. He chops and dices and slices. He is not here for management, for entertainment. You need a real manager. Somebody who is going to be able to separate personal and professional. You are being extremely disrespectful to this man. You are talking to him crazy and that's not okay. I would say the same thing if he was speaking to her that way. The man is a grown up. If he did not work, if he was just lounging around on the couch, she would be devastated. She'd be telling everybody what a loser her husband is. But the fact that he is working for you for free and still teaching his cooking classes, that says a lot. Let the man do what he needs to do and you hire your own manager. So then the ladies get together to celebrate Robin's birthday and Candace mentions that there's a couple of ladies missing. Bill tries to say that she texted Wendy. She wanted to have a conversation, but Wendy didn't text her back. So as far as she's concerned, the offer to talk has expired and the relationship is over. And Escala says, after that weekend, I think she deserves a little time. You know, you guys really went hard at Wendy over the weekend. She feels attacked. This filthy milkmaid. You drove four hours to ruin my trip. This is why I don't deal with her. As I've said, when I want to be messy, I'll admit to doing the churning. Did not. Oh, absolutely that hoe did. You called me a hoe. I believe you did. Really, and that's appropriate? Yes. Okay. Yes, it was. Why is that? Because I felt like seeing it. You have no legs to stand on. You brought because, your wild because arms you out. Yeah, I'm Williamsburg I'm I'm to now. spread I'm lies now. and bullshit. So, and then you so, took off with so, your breast milk. Y'all want to talk about body shaming, right? I'm so not body shaming you. Calling me why? You walking into a room and body shaming yourself. I'm why? With your big ass face and your big ass oh. forehead. Candace, 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 
Candace. You are reverting back to Candace of old. I mean, no ma'am, no ma'am, no ma'am. The body shaming is a no ma'am. Absolutely not, absolutely not. Ashley did strike that match and leave, that's true. But what you are doing to Ashley right now is absolutely tacky and tasteless. You don't have any right to comfort that woman's body or her breast milk and get off her forehead, okay? Everyone is not blessed with a tiny forehead. I mean, seriously. You cannot use someone's motherhood as shade. And Candace, if you had just had a baby and somebody brought you wide body and breast milk and all that other stuff, you would be devastated, practically in tears. You would be so busy folding a napkin, you wouldn't know what to do. You are not right for that. Leave that woman alone. And Candace, you really showed your butt this episode. The way you spoke to Chris, the way you keep talking down about Ashley and her motherhood, you should seek some therapy. I'm sorry, I, I was trying to give Candace the benefit of the doubt. I thought she has really grown up, she has matured, but no ma'am, no ma'am, no ma'am. That was wrong, that was wrong, Candace. You are absolutely reverting back to the old Jew. Anyway, peeps, get down in the comments. Let me know what you thought. And until next time, bye.